Hello, this is Patsy Vinogradov, and I direct ATLAS here at Hamlin University. ATLAS provides professional development to adult educators throughout Minnesota, and I wanted to share a few words about standards and standards-based education, as this topic is getting a lot of attention in the field today, and many questions have come up in Minnesota about content standards, and in particular, the college and career readiness standards for adult education that came out in 2013. There are three main questions that I hope to answer with this brief webcast, and those are, what, uh, what is standards-based education? What are Minnesota's content standards, and why are these important? Academic content standards serve as the foundation for state and district K-12 education systems, and they are now part of the adult education landscape as well. The standards communicate to both teachers and students the skills that learners are expected to master at various levels of ability. So content standards are broadly defined as what students should know and be able to do. Content standards describe the knowledge and skills that adult students will have upon completion of an instructional program. Content standards are the foundation then for designing curricula, instruction, and assessment. However, it should be clear that content standards do not dictate the type of lesson plans, activities, or teaching methods to be used in the classroom. In Minnesota ABE, content standards represent what we know our learners need to be able to do in order to succeed in post-secondary settings, career training, and uh, towards deeper community involvement. And three key documents define Minnesota's ABE content standards, and those are the College and Career Readiness Standards for Adult Education, as well as the uh, ACES Transitions Integration Framework, called the TIF, and also the North Star Digital Literacy Standards. So you may be wondering why three, three different documents, three sets of standards for Minnesota ABE. Well, we know our students need to be strong readers and writers and have strong numeracy skills to achieve their personal transitions goals. And these standards are defined in the CCRS. But we also know that though they need those kind of hard to define skills like teamwork and time management and critical thinking in decision making. And these make or break skills are defined in the ACES TIF, the Transitions Integration Framework. And then undergirding all of this content is the reality of living and working in the 21st century where digital literacy is essential to the workplace, to college and career training, and also to engaging as a citizen in our society. So digital literacy skills are detailed in the North Star Digital Literacy Standards. And this makes up the three documents, the College and Career Readiness Standards that outline English language arts and math, Transitions Integration Framework, which outlines some of the soft skills or professional skills, and then digital literacy skills as outlined in North Star. Two questions um, I and the state ABE staff are often asked is, what's the law and do we have to teach to these college and career readiness standards? So let's focus in on the CCR for a bit. Well, the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, or WIOA, of 2014 uh, requires that state ABE content standards align to state K-12 academic standards. And in Minnesota, the College and Career Readiness Standards for Adult Education have been adopted by our state ABE office as they align with our K-12 academic standards and are written specifically with adult learners in mind. However, it should be noted that the law does not require a single state or federal curriculum, nor does it dictate how local programs then implement the standards. The U.S. Department of Education is revising the NRS, or the National Reporting System, level descriptors to align to the CCRS, and starting in 2017, the U.S. Department of Education plans to have NRS pre- and post-tests aligned to CCRS in language arts and in math. Minnesota state statute uh, states that ABE programs need to comply with federal ABE accountability requirements. So those are the laws governing um, content standards. And the answer to the second question, uh, do we have to teach to these standards, is yes. All of us in ABE in Minnesota need to be moving toward implementing the college and career readiness standards for adult education. So many adult educators have been in the field a long time, and we have seen educational trends come and go. And I think it's tempting to think about content standards as perhaps a phase that can be ignored. But content standards and standards-based education is not a passing fashion. This is the way of doing business in K-12 education, and it has been for over 20 years. 
Many state adult basic ed systems already have content standards in place. And while content standards are new to Minnesota ABE, we are somewhat unique in that respect. Having agreed upon standards, however, is quickly becoming simply the way adult education does business. A couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, Minnesota ABE is moving towards the implementation of standards-based system in which standards, curriculum and instruction, and assessment are all aligned. This will not happen overnight, but it's something we are moving toward. And even if the standards do evolve or change over time, a move toward a common set of college and career readiness standards for the state brings a variety of benefits. Those benefits include basically the three main purpose for, uh, purposes for having content standards in the first place. First of all, they provide teachers and administrators with a shared vision for adult education. This includes a common language for discussing outcomes and guidelines for structuring curriculum, instruction, and assessment. And content standards assure that high mobility students and, and those students who may drop out or stop out have access to logical and predictable set of skills that all teachers and programs are working toward. Secondly, content standards serve as guideposts for students uh, that they can follow as they make progress and it gives them more responsibility for their own learning and helps them design their own goals. And finally, content standards describe to stakeholders outside of adult education. So for example, post-secondary institutions, vocational programs, and employers, what adult education students know and are able to do. All of this work helps to clarify the identity and the role of adult education in Minnesota and helps us serve our learners more effectively as they transition to what's next. So if you're wondering where you can learn more, um, ATLAS has a content standards page on its website and it's listed here. You'll just want to go to atlasabe.org and then under professional, simply click on content standards. We are fortunate to have advisory groups around all of the Minnesota content standards, including ACES uh, TIFF and North Star. And pictured here is the, uh, most of the CCRS implementation team for Minnesota ABE. You'll see some familiar faces. This team has representatives for both English language arts and math, and it includes adult educators from a variety of contexts, such as large leveled programs, also one room schoolhouse or drop-in programs in rural areas, as well as county corrections, and professional developers and state staff are part of this team. Some ways to keep on top of current content standards training and information are to, of course, read the weekly Minnesota AB Connect newsletter that arrives in your inbox uh, from Sherry at the State Office, and also to visit the Atlas calendar for event and activity descriptions and registration information. I hope this brief webcast has answered some of your questions about content standards and standards-based education, and I hope you'll engage in professional development around CCRS, ACES, and TIFF, and of course, Northstar at professional development events and activities in the coming months. Thank you.